Hello, dudes, dudettes, duders, and everyone in between. No tea today, the kettle is broken. Today we're going to look at the basics of setting up a DJI Ronin S. This tutorial will include building out the gear, balancing a camera, connecting to the app, and tearing the equipment down. For this tutorial, we'll be using two cameras, the Canon 5D and the Sony ZV-1. If you're shooting on the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera Series, we have a separate balancing video just for you. Link somewhere, I guess. The first step in using a Ronin S is putting the pieces together. When you open the case, you'll find everything you need. The tripod adapter, the battery, the gimbal, and a quick release plate. I build from the bottom up, so that means connecting the tripod pod to the battery, the battery to the gimbal, and then the gimbal to the plate. As you attach the gimbal, be sure to lock it in place with this little arm. It's not the firmest locking device in camera mount history, so be sure to double check that it's secure. With the gimbal built, you're ready to put the camera on the quick release plate and the plate on the gimbal. The goal here is to get the camera light and the center of gravity low. That's why I remove accessories like cages, external microphones, and camera straps. 90% of my gimbal shoots are MOS anyway, so a body and lens are usually enough to get the job done. To keep the weight low, I tend to shoot on prime lenses. Today I've got a 28mm M42 lens on the 5D body. I also prefer to shoot all manual when I'm not on Sony cameras, so cheap as chips vintage lenses will work just fine for our purposes. Sony's autofocus is so responsive that I don't really shy away from it, on the gimbal or off, but Blackmagic's and Canon's aren't nearly as reliable. Now we get to the balancing act. When balancing a Ronin, I start at the camera and work my way back to the gimbal. This means starting by locking the quick release plate and following the arms back motor by motor. For the quick release plate, get the camera to a place where it doesn't tip forwards or backwards when you let it go and then lock it off. Once you have it locked off, slide it left and right until it feels comfortable. You likely won't be able to get it perfectly balanced, but you'll get a sense if it's tipping to the left or to the right too aggressively. Now we want to raise the camera up until the lens is aligned with the first motor. Once you have it aligned, let it swing unfettered by your mealy grasp to see if you need to adjust the release plate. It's really easy to feel like you've balanced a camera with a low center of gravity. You've actually just lowered the center of gravity to where it physically can't tip over. It's not balanced, it's sleeping in a saggy hammock. Now that we've got the lens aligned with the first motor, we need to adjust the left and right and the front to back. I like to keep the camera as tight above the gimbal as possible as this will give you the best results and make your gimbal do less work. Moving forward through the chain of motors may require that you go back and fine tune previous balances. That's okay. You really want to pin down the balance and there's a reason for this. Careful balancing will save you battery life. If you balance correctly, gravity will do the heavy lifting when it comes to correcting the camera. If you balance incorrectly, the motors will constantly be working against the pull of gravity, reducing steadiness and draining the battery quicker. It's one of those things where five extra minutes at the top of a shoot can buy you another hour of operation towards the end of the day in the form of longer battery life. That's time well spent if you ask me. If you're happy with the balance, you can power up the gimbal and start using it. As with most things in this modern world of ours, you'll need an app to access the higher functionality of the device. Let's get into that. The Ronin S is compatible with the DJI Ronin app. The devices pair easily enough, but you may need a password if it's your first time connecting. Ours is set to the factory default, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I know, I know, that's the kind of thing an idiot would have on his luggage. But here we are regardless. Once connected, tap on motor parameters and tap auto-tune. You can also auto-tune by holding the trigger and M button simultaneously for 4 seconds. This will cause the gimbal to shimmy and shake as it tries to figure out how heavy the load is and how stiff the motors should be to accommodate. Fully auto-tuned, the gimbal is now ready to shoot. Go! Make something beautiful! Unless you're using a smaller camera. Smaller cameras are a bit different, so let's swap out the 5D for a ZV-1. The gimbal was built assuming that there would be a bit of a payload. DJI has other models that are more designed for GoPros and mobile phones, and this one is a step up from there. When you use an ultralight camera on this gimbal, it doesn't always respond as you'd expect. The first trick is balancing. Depending on the weight of the camera, it simply might not be heavy enough to outweigh the gimbal motor. When balancing the ZV-1, I have to keep it about an inch to the left of the handle to counterbalance the right motor. Likewise, it's all but impossible to get the center of gravity high enough on the camera that it doesn't just rock in the cradle. This is, you know, okay. It's not ideal, but it's not going to damage your gimbal in any meaningful way. 
The real surprise with the lighter camera is when you turn the gimbal on. Depending on the motor's stiffness, it may vibrate like it's lost its little gimbal mind. Don't panic if you see this happening. Just auto-tune the thing, either through the app or by holding the trigger and M. Once you're done shooting, packing the Ronin back up can be a bit of a tricky prospect. The tripod and battery are easy enough, but when it comes to the gimbal itself, the task feels a bit like solving the lament configuration. It's actually easier than it might seem. I start the process by loosening all the knuckles. When placing it in the box, I go controller first and then wiggle the arms into place, moving up from the controller to the cradle. It's hardly more than a bit of nudging and you'll have it back in place and ready to be returned to the shelf. I hope this tutorial was helpful in setting up a DJI Ronin S. If you liked what you saw, you are warmly invited to like, comment, subscribe, and click the bell for notifications. We've got weekly film-oriented videos here for your casual consumption, and we also have a Patreon page where we do a series called The Gallery, wherein we explain the pieces going up on the ever less austerely decorated office wall. As always, we'll be adding a piece to the wall this week, and that piece is, oh gee, look at the time, got a boogie.